tell us first of all who you are and what you do. Right. I'm, I've been with the UN for 25 years. I have been in, in about eight different conflict zones. I'm currently the political director of the Secretary General's office in New York, covering political, peacekeeping, humanitarian and human rights matters. I've been doing that for the last two and a half years. Thank you. And in your career, did you concentrate specifically on conflict zones? I didn't make a decision that that's what I was going to do, but that's what I get asked to do. So I, I have, um, in the end, that's where I get dispatched. And essentially, I have worked more on, on those matters and in just pure development situations. Yes. So I, I've focused more, it, it turned out. I, be, I joined the UN in 1989 in Afghanistan and subsequently have worked in the Middle East, in Iraq, um, West Africa, South Sudan, Kosovo uh, during the war there and, and many other places. So it's essentially, yes, well, one gets um, slightly bracketed, perhaps, as a, as a conflict person. What keeps you working in these places? What keeps you going back to, to conflict zones? I mean, it, it could just be a job, or is it? do you feel that you can actually make a difference in these places? Why? I feel, yes, I feel, I feel that one can make a difference. Um, because even, one doesn't necessarily make a massive difference. One doesn't suddenly get deployed in an area and therefore peace is is brought. Um, but you can certainly help ameliorate the situation. You can perhaps prevent a recurrence of it. Um, I've certainly been involved in places where, um, it, of course, it's always very difficult to prove a negative. You can never say that it's thanks to us um, or whichever. Um, Mark's very important, um, Mark Mollet's very important peace initiatives in various parts of the world. Um, if it doesn't, if war doesn't happen, you can't say, look, it's, you can't prove that it's because of your activities, and I would never do that. But I'm pretty confident that there have been areas where um, the work that I've been involved in through the UN and with, with a lot of other people, that as a result of that, not only are the effects of warfare less dire than they would have been, um, but then also one has contributed to perhaps building confidence between the sides that makes a, rec um, a recrudescence of that violence more likely. So you, one hopes that if it's um, that it, one, it can, one can at least work on the margins to to improve things. Thank you. And where have you been focusing your energies at the moment? Where have you been working? I think in the, in the last few months it, it will be the Israel Palestine and the Iraqi issues. Um, I spent a lot of time in Iraq myself, and um, with the desperate crisis going on at the moment, um, with the uh, appearance of ISIS two or three months ago and the fall of Iraq's second largest city within 24 hours, um, I mean Iraq is in a full-on crisis and the fact that uh, President Obama this week talked about, uh, used the the G word which is a sort of huge trigger in my, word, geno in my world, um, genocide, um, saying that there's an intent to commit genocide um, and I don't think he's wrong on that. I, I think uh, there is an intention, to intent to commit genocide and uh, there will be an absolute compelling need for the international community to come together to deal with this. And by the way, I mean, I think there will be that international consensus. I and mean, this is not like Iraq in 2003, which was one of the most divisive issues in the UN's entire 60 year history was the Bush Blair Iraqi invasion. But in this time round, um, there is a very clear international consensus on the need to stop ISIS and the absolute barbaric uh, viciousness with the way um, ISIS is carrying out its offensive and decapitating people of other faiths is uh, it makes everybody in the region feel that they are under threat. And so I, I don't think that this time it will be a controversial um, decision to, for, uh, for the international community to, to coalesce around this threat. As I said, this is not like Iraq um, in 2000, and it's not like Israel in Gaza um, of last month, where, where in Britain, well, particularly in the US, but also in Europe, you could have a very just spirited debate as to um, who was more in the wrong, Israel or Hamas. But in the, in, in, this is not like that when, it, when it's ISIS, um, even if nobody on the other side is regarded as particular saints. And I think most people who follow Iraq um, would be reluctant to point as any political figure in Iraq as being even vaguely resembling a saint. Um, but in this case, it is um, the, the, the extent
extent of the evilness of it. I hate the word evil, but I mean, the very, very few things in my life that one can actually point to as evil, I would have thought this, this is pretty close to, to being.